a little bit of deja vu for the Broncos in the Bay Area as they fall as time expires 21 to 20. The Broncos postgame show starts right now. Hello, thanks for joining us for the Broncos postgame show. I am Phil Milani, joined as always by Nick Ferguson and our guest today, former Broncos wide receiver, Benny Fowler. Benny, thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate you guys having me. Looking forward to this show. Uh, the Broncos fall a, a similar fashion. They're giving up a, a late drive, and then uh, the 49ers score that field goal. Uh, what did you think about the game tonight? I thought the game, it was tough for the Broncos to finish like that. We don't want to see that finish. We want to come out with a W, especially because – there were so many good highlights on the offense and defensive end. We just didn't finish the right way, but there's there's a lot to be happy about. Yeah, for me, I'm definitely happy about what we saw from the Broncos. I think let's start with the first and most important thing. Javante Williams made his return, and I know a lot of people in Broncos country were eager to see him come back. And I think he only had like three carries for 18 yards, but it was good to see him back in the Broncos uniform. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I mean, the first uh, unit out there did a nice job, and really uh, that's what you want to see. You want guys to come out of this healthy. Uh, but like Sean Payton said last week, hey, there's a different feeling when you win the game. It doesn't matter if it's preseason or not. So uh, I know that uh, Sean Payton uh, did not look too happy uh, leaving the field there tonight. Uh, let's check out the highlights from the Bay Area. Russell Wilson, just one drive tonight, 13 plays for QB1. And like Nick mentioned tonight, the return of Javante Williams knocking off the rust. He had four catches for 18 yards. And uh, this one was his first carry back, uh, 12 yards on the ground for Javante Williams. Wilson used his legs a lot tonight. Uh, he finished, uh, with the, finished his uh, only drive with a field goal. Uh, how about Zach Allen here again? Uh, his first sack as a Bronco. Uh, he was a big free agent signing this offseason. It was a low scoring half. The Broncos in the two minute drill here late. Jalen Virgil comes up just short and time runs out. Virgil uh, dinged up on the play and uh, not getting any points there uh, would come back to haunt the Broncos. 6 3 at the break. Third quarter here. Broncos get a nice bounce on the punt. Foster Moreau there to recover. The Broncos waste no time. Very next play, Jaleel McLaughlin. We're going to talk about this guy a lot. Uh, he continues to make plays. He'd add another touchdown later. The Broncos up, but uh, we saw this last week. Uh, the defense lets Ronnie Bell get free on this play. And then with the clock winding down, Jake Moody puts it through. 32 yards on the field goal, and the Broncos fall 21 to 20. Let's go out field level and check in with our team reporters, Sydney Jones and Eric Dillon. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, Eric, we heard Sean Payton say earlier in the week that this first team offense was only going to be out there for about 20 to 24 snaps. He was pretty much spot on. They were out there for 25 plays, but quarterback Russell Wilson, he was only out there for one drive. He moved the ball really well. What did you like from him? Yeah, I mean, that's that's about as good as we've seen Russell Wilson look here during training camp during the preseason. That's what you want to see from him. We've heard again and again about how he's slimmed down a little bit. He looks better. He looks kind of back to that running form, and you saw that he took off three times, 25 yards, including a long one there on third down. Would have had more, had a read option that uh, got called back because kind of an iffy holding penalty. Took a shot there at the end of Jerry Judy. Didn't quite connect, but I was impressed with how the Broncos moved the ball. That's not a that's not a, uh, a shabby 49ers defense. They've got a, right. a strong defensive line. The pass protection held up. Russell Wilson looked good, and, and one drive was enough. Yeah. Well, we saw running back Javante Williams back out here for the first time since suffering that knee injury back in October. And, you know, he finished his outing with three carries for 12 yards, four catches for 18 yards. It was really great to see him back out there, Eric. Yeah, it was. And it, I think maybe some nerves on that first sure. play, a little bit of a drop. But Russell Wilson goes right back to him, picks up a first down. You see him run the football, uh, got out of there with no issues. I mean, that's what you, you wanted to see. And listen, he wasn't going to get 20 carries tonight. They, they were smart with him in terms of how many plays he got. But you wanted him to knock the rust off before the opener against the Raiders. That's what he did. For sure. And looking at this first team defense, Eric, you know, they were out there a lot longer than they were in that first preseason game. Pretty much played throughout the whole first half. But, you know, ended up forcing three turnovers. You know, we're pretty efficient on third down. Overall, just what do you think from that unit? Yeah, obviously the defense as a whole, you struggle there at the yeah. end. And you wish you are able to come out with a win. But the first team defense did some good things. You struggle initially on that first drive against Brock Purdy. But you tighten up in the red zone. A sack by Jonathan Cooper. I thought that was good. Mm -hmm. And then these guys just kept playing hard and got some stops. Um, again, you saw the effort. I thought the tackling went got better as you went along. Um, Sang Bassey gets that interception. Yeah. You saw them make plays. 
Now, the, the end of game scenarios, you still got to work out, but uh, For sure. encouraged by what I saw. Definitely. Well, we'll head into the locker room in a few minutes to hear from a couple players, but from Levi Stadium, Phil, we'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we're back here in studio. Benny Fowler and Nick Ferguson here. Guys, uh, let's talk about Russell Wilson's uh, performance out there. Just a one drive. Thought maybe we'd see a little bit more for him, but uh, hey, when you're as productive as he was, uh, let's just get him out of the game. Absolutely. I think when what we saw to Russ today was great. I think from the way he climbed up in the pocket, the way they moved the pocket when he was when he was out there, and just the fact that he was able to use his legs. The fact that he lost 15 pounds, he looks light, he looks lean, he ran for a couple of first downs, he did some off-schedule plays. It was just good to see him, and I think Sean Payton got, he, he saw everything that he needed to see in terms of Russell Wilson and the production and the productivity. The big thing for me is this, when we take a look at what we saw today opposed to last year, I mean, they call the design QB run. When have we seen that before? I mean, we saw it against the Kansas City, but that was late in the season. So Sean Payton is starting out this season, letting everyone know that this is going to be a different season, different offense, and a different Russell Wilson. And you're right, Benny. The fact that Russell was able to pull the ball down, get some extra yards, that's going to force defenders, when they face him week in and week out, they now have to count for Russell escaping the pocket. He looked good moving around out there. Uh, I mean, uh, 15 pounds, that's a lot for some somebody like these elite athletes. I mean, 15 pounds, a lot of weight. Uh, Benny, you played for Sean Payton. Uh, what would you take away from that first drive? It looked like maybe they were scheming some stuff up. Yeah, Sean is really good at helping players operate from a place of strength. And we got a chance to see that today in terms of the personnel. Maybe the first eight plays, it was eight different personnels. It was empty formations. It was two tight ends. It was uh, three receivers. So we got a chance to see what Sean Payton can really do and how he can really scheme up things. We got even a fullback dive on a short yardage situation. So when we think about this season and how this offense is going to look, it is going to look very exciting. And it's going to look different at different times. And everybody, all the players on this roster will be able to operate from a place of strength. So that's what Sean is really good at. What are you really good at? And he's going to put you in a position to win. See, that's why I never panic when the uh, we were in practice and everyone's saying, well, the office is off to a slow start. We go back and we look at the Arizona game and say, well, you had a couple of three and outs where this offense is not going to be what the Broncos country fans expect it to be. But just for what you said right now, you look at week in and week out, there's going to be different nuances that he's adding to the offense that's going to force opposing defenses to now really stay up at night and try to slow down this offense. So I was really excited about what I saw today. All right. Well, here's uh, what Russell Wilson had to say at the podium after the game. Yeah, I thought we did a great job. I thought the offense aligned did a tremendous job with, with protection. Um, you know, uh, I thought that they did a really good job of keeping the space, and I was able to step up and get the ball out of my hand quickly, get, get the ball to the right guys at the right time, and then obviously scramble for some – really big first downs and using my legs. I feel great, you know, um, and so uh, those guys did a great job, you know, protecting. It was good to see Mims out there make his first uh, catch too as well on a key play. And just um, there's a lot of good things, you know, feel great about it, just where we are and just all the hard work those guys have been putting in, all of us together, and it's coming together one day at a time. So that's Russell Wilson at the podium uh, out there at Levi Stadium. Uh, guys, uh, the big news, uh, you know, early in this game was Javante Williams. Uh, Coming back after that ACL, that just terrible injury last season. Good to see him out there and knock off some of that rust. It was great to see him out there. The fact that it's, he's only 10 months out of ACL oh, and the fact that he's back out there during the preseason is, is incredible. I think I heard that Sean wanted to play him about four plays. Sean even got excited and kept him out there for about 10 to 12 <laughs> plays. It was good to see him catch the ball out of the backfield. It was good to see him run the ball, run hard. He didn't look timid at all. So, very happy about that. And you can see the, just the juice that he plays with and the, the fire that he can bring to this offense. The, the one thing about Javante is you're, you're right. Being at this particular point, 10 months out from an injury, as a guy that's had two knee surgeries, I could tell you how fantastic that is. And the first thing I was looking for was the first point of contact. How was he going to uh, actually react once he was running through that contact? And I didn't see him favor his leg. I didn't see any of that. So, all of those are good signs as though maybe next game, I don't know what Sean Payne's going to do, maybe give him some more carries. Let's just see. Just, just a couple more. Just a couple. Nick, you mentioned those injuries. I see you after the show, man, just getting them out of here. <laughs> see, that's why it's so important that Javante is out there so right now and he's running the way that he's running. You mentioned him not favoring anything. That's sort of a mental thing, right? You know, getting out there, getting a hit. 
being in a stadium live, you know, uh, getting over that hurdle, it's got to be big for him. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. And he looks confident out there. And I really love what Sean did at the beginning of the game, which is the first play was going to him. Screen pass. Yes, he dropped it. But it's good that Sean had that confidence and gave him that confidence. Like, no, we're going to feed you the ball and get you going. And in the next play, I mean, he dropped it, but the next play, he he gets a catch. He made up for it. He made up for it. It's good to see. Yeah, I mean, you you want to see it. Last week, it was Jerry Judy dropping a pass and then scoring a touchdown. You want to know, as a player, that your coach, your quarterback, still has confidence in you. And a guy who has been injured, and obviously the injury was kind of a, a, a gro- I don't want to say gross injury, but it was something that oh. sounded like. Yeah, it kind of sidelined him for a while. But to see him get back there out there and have that level of confidence, these are the things that you want to see moving forward. And this is why I am a very optimistic person, but I'm very optimistic in the past two games from what I've seen from this offense thus far. Here's what uh, Javante had to say after the game. Yeah, um, it was really all about just getting the nerves off. Um, I just wanted to get tackled again. Well, tackle, yeah, tackled again to see how I felt. Um, and that's the biggest hurdle that I feel like I had left with the whole recovery process. So um, just getting it out of the way was good. Yeah, um, it was just like a weight just lifted off of me. It, um, I was thinking that it was going to hurt or something, but um, I really didn't even feel it. I just jumped right back up. And Javante Williams, uh, not the only running back uh, out there making the headlines here, Jale- Jaleel McLaughlin. I mean, this guy... He was sort of the star of training camp, and he took it out to the to the game, scored last week, and then he had two tonight. Yes, he did really well tonight. I think he solidified his spot on this team. Sean loves a two-back system. He loves a couple of power backs. We have two power backs, but you need that back out of the backfield that can really catch the ball, who's exciting, and he can take things the distance. So I'm really excited about this addition to the offense, and he's an undrafted guy, correct? Yep, yeah, that's, State. That's, that's it's great. I, you know, Nick's yeah. our undrafted guy, so I'm always pulling for an undrafted guy. So it's great to see what Jaleel did out there today. Yeah, for me, I, I'll have to say this. I mean, watching this kid play in practice, it was always a frame of mind like, well, what is he going to do in the game? And for the past few games, he's definitely has stepped up. Uh, I think it was 44 yards on kickoff return. He has turned into a Swiss Army knife for this Broncos offense. And I'm going to put it out there right now. I'm calling him a crossing guard because he is stopping traffic with everything that he does. And this is the type of player that Sean Payton, knowing, and you played with the Benny, yep. you know his mind and the things that he can come up with. If you can get McLaughlin gone like an Alvin Kamara, I mean, this offense, I dare to say, it could be one of the top offenses in this league. Uh, everybody always wants to compare a guy to Alvin Kamara. I keep hearing, you know, hey, this guy, he could be that Alvin Kamara. That's Those are some big shoes for an undrafted guy to come into. But it seems like that speed is the real deal. I mean, we saw it in practice. Yeah. And then tonight, you know, he stops on a dime and walks in, you know. and He looks different out there. Absolutely. And when I say the Alvin Kamara, I'm no disrespect to Alvin Kamara. Jalil has the ability, the yeah. ability and he has the big play ability. When I say that, though, it's what you're talking about, that stopping on the dime, those exciting plays, the fact that he can run the ball between the tackles, the fact that he can take a toss, the fact that he can take a screen, punt return, kick return, he can just do a lot of different things, and he's always going to keep you off guard. That's the one thing being a defender. Facing up against a guy who can accelerate and decelerate, that change of direction, it puts a lot of people off balance. And we saw it tonight, the eight-yard run, I mean, the guy had him dead to rights, but he was able to shake him and then get inside the red yeah. zone. So, so these are the skill sets that you possess. And no, once again, no disrespect to Evan Kamara, but what we're talking about is versatility. That's what you want. Someone who's an impact player, McGoughlin is definitely an impact player. Not just running the ball, catching the ball. I mean, he, he can do a lot of different things out there. So uh, exciting to see what his, see his potential play out on the field. Uh, let's go inside the Broncos locker room and uh, hear from Sidney Jones. Thanks, Phil. We're here inside the ro- locker room with running back Jaleel McLaughlin. Jaleel, another game, you no know, more touchdowns, two touchdown game for you. What did it mean to contribute in that way today? Um, it meant a lot. Definitely meant a lot to me. Um, I just try to do every, uh, everything I can to help the team win. So still we didn't get the win, but um, it definitely means a lot uh, to, to be able to score, for sure. Yeah, you know, we saw you enter the game a lot earlier, you know, in this preseason game. For you, with increased snaps, you know, what kind of opportunities does that really create for you? A uh, huge opportunity. I'm just trying to work as hard as I can to and stay focused so that I'm able to, um, once I am able to get in there, I'm able to know what I'm doing and, uh, like I said, do whatever I can just to help the team win. Julia, what do you hope to continue to do to just prove to these coaches that, you know, 
you've earned a spot on this roster? Uh, just continue to be myself, you know, continue to be myself, be a great teammate um, first, you know, and just continue to be myself and, and just enjoy it. You know, it's definitely a blessing to be here. So just enjoy it. Yeah, I know, you know, head coach Sean Payton, he put a lot big emphasis on winning in the preseason. You know, unfortunately, that wasn't the outcome today. But what was his message to the team here in the locker room following the game? We're going to get back work, got, get back to work tomorrow. You know, get back to work and just keep working. And, um, you know, because hard work pays off. So we're going to just continue to work, uh, work hard. And hopefully we're going to, you know, we're going to start to get those wins for sure. Well, Julio, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Phil, I'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, Cindy. Yeah, back here in studio with Benny Fowler and Nick Ferguson. Guys, uh, as much positive as there were out there, we've talked about it uh, so far. we got to talk about this defense and giving up that late touchdown. Uh, are you concerned about anything here, just it happening two weeks in a row? Or, hey, uh, once guys like uh, Justin Simmons and PS2 are out there, this stuff won't be happening. I don't think that will be happening when those guys are out there. Those are Pro Bowl guys. Those are first-team, all-pro type of guys. But it is concerning. We do want to finish strong, and we talked a little bit in the back about the depth. Depth is super important. If we want to go far, if the Broncos want to go far, go to the playoffs and do incredible things, you have to have depth. So we have to be able to finish strong, and it is a little concerning. In terms of the young players, you want those young players to show up, and you want them to make plays, and that has to be fixed by the end of the preseason. If we're going to go far, if we're going to have double digit wins, 10 plus wins and win the AFC West, you have to have depth and you have to be able to finish games. Being able to finish games is something that's really important. And if you're Vance Joseph, yeah, you want those young guys to finish. But here's what we're seeing. Let's be totally honest. We're seeing a bunch of young guys who are not used to being on the field for long periods of time. We saw in the Arizona game, long drive. San Francisco game. Long drive. You can see guys breathing heavily, some with hands on hips. And that's a clear sign to an offensive coordinator, keep running the ball, keep throwing the ball down the field. And that's exactly what was happening. So there were guys outside their gaps. There were guys missing tackles. So you worry about that from a depth standpoint, but we know that's not going to happen when the starters are in the game. But it's a lesson to make sure that you're well conditioned, both physically and mentally. Yeah, the Broncos are falling uh, 21 to 20. Let's go back into the Broncos locker room and uh, check in once again with Sidney Jones. Thanks, Phil. We're here checking in with cornerback Isang Bassi. Isang, back to back weeks with interceptions. What do you like about how you're making big plays in the preseason here? Just being in the right spot at the right time. Uh, if I do my assignment, you know, to make the plays that come to me, and that's what I've been doing the past couple of weeks. You know, you're playing everywhere in the secondary right now. You know, started the game at nickel, moved to safety. Do you take a lot of pride in just being so versatile? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, guys go down all the time in the NFL. Injuries happen. And the more you can do, the more valuable you are. So that's just what I've tried to do over the past couple of years, just learn different positions. So I'm always ready when called upon. You know, now a couple weeks into the preseason, preseason where do you like where your game's at? I like it a lot. You know, I've been improving every day in practice. Um, it's been translating to the game. And just got to keep that momentum going throughout the rest of the preseason and going into the year. Where do you feel like your game's really taken, you know, the next step this uh, offseason in training camp? Just knowing offensive formations and tendencies and coordinators. Um, the game has slowed down a lot for me going into year four, so it's allowed me to play faster out there. So. Last one for you, E. You know, last preseason game is next week, so what are you really hoping to prove in that final game? Just keep keep. Proving that I know multiple positions, keep improving throughout these practices. We got joint practices with the Rams coming up. So just competing hard and finishing the preseason strong. We appreciate your time, Isang. For sure. Thank you. Phil, I'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Sydney. Let's time to wrap up uh, our post-game show here. The Broncos have the Rams coming in for a couple of joint practices next week and then that final preseason game a, a week from tonight. Benny, you like joint practices? There's, there could be some good work there. Absolutely. I, I love a joint practice. You know it's going to be competitive, but it's even more reps. As an undrafted player, I love joint practices because this is an opportunity, number one, for you to get more reps, game-like reps, but then also you know, you have to think about if I'm not playing here, this is another opportunity to show another team what I can do. I think it's also great for the offensive line. You're going to be going against Aaron Darling. You're going to be going against a great defense and a great pass rush. This will be great reps, and this also be a great week for Russell Wilson and the receivers and running backs to continue to take a step forward and continue to have that rhythm going into the season. See, I love these uh, joint practices because I wish more teams did these instead of having preseason games because – it's more tape to evaluate from a coaching standpoint than the preseason game because the intensity is revved up just a little. 
Now, obviously, you want to make sure that there is no tempers flaring and because you paid attention around the league. Every time there's a joint practice, <laughs> there's always something popping off. Right. So you want to make sure that nothing like that happens. But this is a great week to get that final evaluation because a lot of the starters will not play in this last preseason game. And this is, in essence, will be their last preseason games for those starters. So we're going to see who's going to elevate their level of play and which guys are going to get back to the back of the line trying to see, okay, that's Aaron Donald or whatever. So it's going to be a great week of practice. I'm looking forward to it. I was going to say, have you seen Aaron Donald? You don't want to mess with that. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be. It's like DB. So like, look, is that Benny Fowler? Go ahead, go ahead. You go ahead and go. They're going to do the same thing when they do one on ones with Aaron Donald. So that's going to be a joy to watch. Uh, some good work for this Broncos team coming up. Uh, Benny, uh, while we're catching up with you, how you been? Uh, what have you been up to? I've been good. I've been good. I work at a law firm, Michael Best, on mergers and acquisitions on the private equity and venture capital side. And it's, hey. I'm looking forward to even more conversations and how can I bring more of uh, my football knowledge back into my daily life. And I just really appreciate you guys having me and, and looking forward to just being around the team and, and, you know, hopefully seeing the Broncos get back to double digit wins, playoffs. Um, it's good to see Sean Payton here and the foundation that he set. He's one of the best coaches that I've played for and really looking forward to this year. So really appreciate you guys having me. But Phil, Phil, I'm thinking like, where, where is this Iron Man suit? He's talking like you're Tony Starks over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, what is Sean, what is that culture like? I mean, take us inside his mindset and in, in, in that locker room. What is that like? Sean is one of the most intentional people. He's a very intentional person. He, he knows his players. He knows the foundation of what he wants. He will put players in a position to win, but he's a great teacher. He will stop the practices. He will stop the walkthroughs. And hey, he will always point out different situations and he will bring things up from 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Hey, this is this situation. Let me walk you through why this is important. Hey, quarterback is down this week. Who's up? You're taking all the reps. He will put you in a position. You're going to be prepared. The Broncos will be prepared for every single game this year. You can already see the way that the play call sheet looks like. And that's one of the best things that I loved about playing for him. People run, run through a wall for him. And you can see the way that the Broncos have played in this preseason and the way, you know, he's putting the starters out there. This is what this is how it's going to be. No, no questions about it. And I can tell you what, going back just a little in the joint practices, I've practiced against Sean Payton's teams several times in my career, and it's always physical. Now, last time there was a joint practice against San Francisco 49ers. In both years, the Broncos got out to a slow start. The following day, they were ready to go. I don't think when the Rams come in here, we're going to have to worry about that with the Sean Payton's coach team. Yeah, I'll bet they'll be ready to go after uh, losing the first two games the way that they did. Uh, I bet you they'll be ready to go come uh, uh, Wednesday and Thursday when the Rams come to town. All right, that's going to do it for us. Benny, thanks so much for uh, hopping on, man. Really enjoyed your insight, and uh, I'm glad you're doing so well. Appreciate you. Thank you guys for having me. All right, well, that's going to do it for us. The Broncos fall. 21 to 20 out in the Bay Area. For Nick Ferguson and Benny Fowler, I am Phil Milani. This has been the Broncos Post Game Show.